Ethical Perspectives When you see the word philosophy, what comes to mind? Do you presume, no, I don't do that? Do you consider philosophy reserved for the privileged? Is philosophy a luxury? Are you a philosopher? Do you pursue answers through reasoning? If so, you are seeking truth. Philosophy is not so much about coming up with the answers to fundamental questions as it is about trying to find these answers using reasoning rather than accepting without question conventional views or traditional authority. What are ethics? Will Buckingham says, The examination of what it means to lead a good life, what concepts such as justice and happiness mean, and how we can achieve them, and how we should behave, forms the basis for the branch of philosophy known as ethics, or moral philosophy. Do you pursue ideas with ethics in mind? If you concur with Buckingham, then I suggest you are both a philosopher and an ethicist. Not yet convinced you're a philosopher or ethicist? If you are open to contemplate how people reason and come up with answers and assess how we act, you are ready. Get set to join the discussion. Ethics is the discipline dealing with what is good and bad and with moral duty and obligation. Responsibility, moral duty and obligation, plays an essential role in this definition of ethics. As we pursue examination of digital media ethics, let's not lose sight of the role of responsibility. We now have a general definition for two key terms for the course, philosophy and ethics. Let's add two additional keywords to the mix, stakeholders and empathy. A stakeholder is one who is involved in or affected by a course of action. If we will consider right and wrong in roles and responsibilities of individuals, then we can assume actions of people are important. When someone acts, they are by definition stakeholders because of their performance. Others, however, who may not act in a situation, become stakeholders because of the action of others. We'll want to be sure to keep stakeholders, all of them, in our understanding of ethical issues. Empathy is a word that may be more difficult to apply than the word stakeholder. According to Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, empathy is the action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experience of another of either the past or present without having the feelings, thoughts, and experiences fully communicated in an objectively explicit manner. Sympathy is a the act or capacity of entering into or sharing the feelings or interests of another, b. the feeling or mental state brought about by such sensitivity. Sharing of feelings, thoughts, and experiences is the difference between the two definitions. With sympathy, we know what the other person experiences. With empathy, we can understand, be aware, provide sensitivity to the other people's experience without having that same experience ourselves. It may be more challenging to possess empathy than to hold sympathy because we may have experienced what the other person is going through. We need to rely on our reasoning if we want to have empathy. If we can understand the concept of stakeholders and have the capacity for empathy, we can determine what the good actions can be. What approaches are used to address ethical issues? Our definition of ethics emphasizes rights and wrongs along with duties and responsibilities. How do we make comparisons and weigh consequences? This is where perspective enters the equation. Philosophers have advanced ideas for getting at the issues. Call these ideas ethical perspective. Various perspectives don't always align with each other and may conflict depending on how we visualize a situation. Cultures, laws, and morals may vary depending on the place, organization, and people. 
it is difficult to find a single universal perspective. Many have tried. Philosophers develop five novel approaches to weigh moral issues. The utilitarian approach, the rights approach, the fairness or justice approach, the common good approach, and the virtue approach. A utilitarian perspective reflects upon how the actions might affect the common good. Utilitarians pursue actions which produce the most good for the greatest number. Utilitarianism seeks to maximize the benefits and minimize the harm. There's a chance a few get harmed, but overall it serves the greater good with this point of view. A utilitarian approach weighs all actions, understands the interest, good, and damage, bad, and the effects on the stakeholders for each action. The action chosen produces the greatest good and the least harm for the greatest number. Let's examine a digital media example using the social media application on Instagram. One popular use of Instagram is to take pictures of oneself, selfies, at places with breathtaking views. Say, for example, at the edge of a cliff on a mountain at a national park. Reports are not uncommon of people getting too close to the edge while capturing such moments. The selfie may amaze the viewer, but too many times people fell to their death or were injured while capturing the moment. The ethical question arises. Should people post pictures of this type on Instagram for public viewing? Weighing the benefits of sharing the picture versus the negative consequences of not sharing, the utilitarian might argue against posting. They may suggest there is a greater potential for harm than good from such an act. While the amazing picture may impress people and an individual might receive great attention and acclaim, the possibility that too many others may try to mimic the act and die because of it outweighs the general good of the act. The utilitarian might say more harm than good comes in posting a picture taken with substantial risk. We'll come back to this example as we look at the other approaches of addressing ethical issues. A second philosophical approach to issues is the rights approach. A rights approach focuses on an individual right to choose for oneself. Cultures vary and people may not agree on individual rights. This approach argues for at least four basic rights, including the right to the truth, the right to privacy, the right against injury, and the right to what we agree. In choosing the correct action, we decide if the action will harm the rights of anyone. If the action violates an individual's rights, we consider it wrong. The greater the harm the action causes, the more immoral the action. How would a rights approach view our Instagram example? Perhaps the act of posting the dangerous selfie does not violate any individual rights. In forbidding the action, we could contend it violates the photographer's right to choose. Any harm to others comes only if they take the risky action themselves, their right to choose. This rights approach decision contradicts the utilitarian approach. How can that be? Using two unique methods such as these shows the challenges encountered when considering ethical decisions. The fairness or justice approach to ethics asks one simple question. Is the act fair? Does the act favor or discriminate against any person or persons? If so, is there justification for it? The fairness or justice approach appeals to the idea that impartial decision-making took place, free from self-interest, prejudice, or favoritism. Fair. In dealing with the Instagram example using the fairness or justice approach, we might accept either decision to allow posting the selfie or denying it, as long as an impartial decision method occurred. The common good approach focuses attention on ensuring the act or acts serve the common good. What do we mean by the term common good? 
It is the idea that all the social systems, policies, and institutions are beneficial to all. Contemporary ethicist John Rawls defined the common good as certain general conditions that are dot 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 equally to everyone's advantage. Like the fairness or justice approach, use of the common good approach to our Instagram dilemma might accept either action as suitable. No harm comes to the common good with either act. The virtue approach to ethics brings into focus the character of the individual. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, virtue is a conformity to a standard of right, morality, b a particular moral excellence. We ask, what kind of person should I be? What will promote the development of character within myself and my community? If I use the virtue approach to our selfie problem, I would argue for banning the selfie posting on the grounds the act does not promote development of my character or my community. Consider two additional perspectives for evaluating ethical decisions. The ontology and the golden rule. The ontology is the theory or study of moral obligation and has a basis in required, forbidden, or permitted choices. This approach leans toward what we ought to do in contrast to a virtuous approach which assesses what kind of person we are and should be. A deontological approach judges actions as good based on clear sets of rules or duties. Correct actions are those which obey the rules. I would allow the selfie post using a deontological approach as long as there are no laws, rules against it. The golden rule is a general rule for how to behave that argues you should treat people the way you would like other people to treat you. With ethical behavior, the golden rule may be a valuable resource. The principle is easy to understand and leaves room for choice and consideration of others. Like the golden rule, the platinum rule in like situations asks us to treat people how they'd like rather than treatment we desire. Some suggest the platinum rule is a more empathetic moral guideline than the golden rule. I guess a person using the golden rule in our selfie problem would allow the post of the picture since they would appreciate having an individual choice in the matter and would extend that choice to anyone. Now that you've heard about seven different ethical perspectives, how would you decide the selfie problem? How did you come to your decision? Did you use one of the ethical perspectives, many or none, to decide? As we work through digital media examples, please be sure to consider the terms stakeholders, empathy, and consequences. And please use the ethical perspectives as resources to help you reason through situations without clear-cut answers.